euch heute mit ähm, auf einen Q&A, also ein Questions and Arts mit einem Entwickler von da ist. Und das ist der David Surland. Ich hoffe, der heißt so. Und das Ganze findet statt im Rahmen der ESL One Finals. Ähm, es geht um Battlefield 4 noch. Ähm, was ich etwas schade finde, weil ich hätte gerne ein bisschen mehr zu ähm, Battlefield Hardline erfahren. Nun ja, aber ich nehme euch trotzdem mit auf dieses Event und ja, wie gesagt, momentan stehe ich noch am Hauptbahnhof, aber ich fahre da jetzt gleich hin und ich hoffe, da coole Leute zu treffen und ja, dann sehen wir uns gleich bei, ja, bei dem Event wieder. I'm probably not the best to answer this. I wasn't part of it from the very beginning. I've worked with everyone that was part of it from the very beginning. So uh, I actually was a tester on Codename Ego, which is more or less the predecessor to Battlefield. Um, it's at least the same engine that 1942 shipped on. So it was more or less a physics test. Can you make a game with vehicles and infantry at the same time? And yes, you can, obviously. <laughs> so that's where it came from, anyways. And then I was part of the Battlefield until Battlefield 2. Yeah, it was a couple of friends from school actually uh, that created uh, Refraction Games, that uh, was what it was called back then. Then they merged with uh, this other gaming company from Sweden, which is known as Digital Illusions, that later became DICE. So it's like a combination of those two companies uh, that created uh, 1942 and onwards. Anyone else? Um, you have the problem Louder, please. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> in Battlefield 4, there are uh, server admins um, which uh, who restrict their weapons on the server, and they kill the players with the script, um, therefore, when they use the weapon. And it's very frustrating for players. Maybe it's um, would be a good uh, suggestion to implement something in Archon or forbidden weapon list or something, so a the player can. Weapon, yeah. Some player can't uh, spawn when yeah. we're we are, we are going to work on uh, a lot of stuff for mm -hmm. configuring the servers more personally, so it's mm -hmm. so you don't have to use Oracle scripts like that to do yeah. that. Uh, it's, it's very annoying. Yeah. It was even worse in BF3 when you actually go quick match into a server where you were allowed to use a knife and you use the weapon and you go to kick or ban. Just come in and join us. It's, uh, but yeah, we will, we will try and get black of this guy of every Not only weapons, but any gadget, anything that you can have. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, Battlefield is on five platforms, so uh, it's very challenging to have the development for a specific game for five platforms, or is it for that to play the new project and all the. You can support them more. Uh, uh, um, I would be lying if I said it wasn't challenging. It has been a lot of challenges during this game uh, with five platforms for sure. Uh, it's easier as time goes on, obviously, you learn a lot about what works and what doesn't. Uh, the old generation of consoles is the most challenging because of memory restrictions and a lot of stuff that we can't do. So basically what happens is we build something, a map for instance, and then at some point um, we have to say, okay, now the map is done, now we have to make it run on Gen 3, which is always a challenge. You have to remove things and, and uh, it takes a long time. And also testing is, is so much harder when it's five consoles or five uh, platforms. So, it takes a lot, of, a lot of extra time compared to having less. Uh, with the Gen 4 consoles it's easier, yeah. but still different platforms. Uh, even uh, Xbox One and PS4, they are very dissimilar when it comes to friend handling. And, uh, a lot of their extra systems, you know, their streaming, uh, video stuff, they have a bunch of extra stuff that we have to take into consideration for a long time. 
And they, they tend to do updates without telling us sometimes, that kind of break things to do. Um, we have one issue right now on PS4 that was caused by an update, a firmware update. So it's challenging and it will continue to be. Who else? Someone up there? No? Ich habe letztes Mal auf schon alleine unterhalten. Bei der Zeitpunkt des DLCs bzw. Update ist nicht gewählt, weil an dem Tag kam ja noch, ich glaube, noch Dragon Age raus, dann gab es noch andere Games, oder noch Fahrzeug kam noch raus, Old in Wirebox überfordert mit DLC und Update. Also keiner konnte großartig downloaden, da gab es Traffic-Probleme. Und die andere Frage ist, Yeah, 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 let's stay with the first one. So uh, what he basically is asking for is if the, the date for the final stand release wasn't yeah, a good choice based on the fact that we had a release of Dragon Age Inquisition at the same time and that we have more releases on, on Origin and we have um, some more releases from other companies. Yeah, uh, I can answer that question. Uh, so. We try to take that into consideration, but as time goes on, it's getting harder and harder to get an open slot for anything, even in, even from our own company. Uh, this release was pushed uh, twice before the final date was set. It was supposed to come out four weeks earlier, like first time in two or something like that. And there, those slots were open, there were no other games. But we ended up on <laughs> November 18th, which was very full of other games and our own games as well. Uh, in the end, it didn't really hurt us too much. You mean uh, how they influence us? I mean, we are electronic arts, really. I mean, they, we are we are an electronic arts company, right? Uh, we are influenced by uh, by the financial side for sure, legal side. Uh, our budgets, obviously. Uh, release dates are connected to financial. Really, that's more or less why we have to release something at a certain date, because revenue is tied to it. So when PA says, here you go, guys, go build a game, here's your money, we have to take that money and we have to deliver something at a certain date. Otherwise, they don't get revenue for that year. I, I'm not a financial guy, I don't know how that stuff works, but it's very annoying because it, as soon as we announce anything, and that's why we can't talk about stuff beforehand either. Uh, which I want to do, but I can't, because if I do that, then we get no money for three months until the next uh, revenue uh, update or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, we always want to do players first, but before it has been different uh, focus uh, at EA compared to what it is now, for sure. So it's, it's hard to describe, but it's not the way that, that EA says, hey, you badass guys in the studio, you need to push out the game. Those guys has also the chance to say, no, we can't go out with the game because it's not ready. It's it's pretty much the same company. So um, yeah, we can push it. Obviously, that's a, that's a, but it's a financial decision. It's not only a creative decision. It's also a financial. One. So that's a way. When when we pushed Hardline, release, for instance, that was a way to push it. Is, it. is it ready? Do we want to get it out? Or do we want to take the financial hit and get out a better product? And in this in this instance, we wanted a better product over the financial loss. So, so but it's not it's not the way like. Probably many guys in the community out there think that there is a fight between EA and DICE about the release date. There is no fight. No, no, uh, there is no work decided. against each other, we work together. So uh, one part of the studio is, re is responsible for <laughs> create the game, make the creative decisions, and the other part is responsible for publishing, for the marketing, for the PR things, to push the, thing in, to push the game into the market. So it's work together hand in hand. Um, there is no war between EA and its studios. Okay. If there is one, I, I miss it. Sorry. Probably we can go out and do some war. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's. I mean, there's always disputes. Like we want, from the studio side, we want our game to be the very best. So we want to push the release always, normally. <laughs> but uh, that, of course, then that's the only like. Uh, Hitting point for EA, we say no, we have to get it out. But it's, the but same it's also a date with, that we agreed to when we took the money in the first place, so it's not like it's not their fault, it's also our fault, obviously. But those, those disputes are totally normal, that is what happened between the part, departments in every company. Yeah. So somebody say, I want to go out with this, and the other department say, No, are you nuts? So and then we need to find a compromise. Yeah.
Leben. Ja, wie ihr seht, ich bin zu Hause, ich habe auch andere Klamotten an. Das heißt, es muss der nächste Tag sein. Ich habe es gestern echt nicht mehr geschafft, das Ende aufzunehmen, also das Ende. Ich erzähle euch natürlich jetzt noch jede Menge. Ah, das ist so viel passiert. Also erstmal hat der Kevin mich angequatscht von den Jungs von Extreme Gamer Squad Esports. Ja, die verlinke ich euch einfach unten in der Infobox, dann wisst ihr Bescheid. Auf jeden Fall, der hat mich direkt eingequatscht, als wir da reinkamen, noch bevor dieses Kuhn A, was ihr gerade gesehen habt, angefangen hat. Und ähm, dann habe ich die ganze Zeit mit den Jungs da gequatscht. Das war super. Also ich habe mit so vielen Leuten da gequatscht und dann waren alle möglichen Leute da und ja, dann hat der Philipp, der hat Donuts dabei gehabt und da hatte ich den coolsten Donut, den blende ich euch jetzt da ein. Ich hatte nämlich einen Krümmelmonster Donut. Keiner hat sich getraut, den zu nehmen, aber ich bin ja nicht so na na eiskalt. Ha, meiner. Ha. Äh, ja, nee, das war richtig cool und ich blende euch sowieso ein paar Fotos da ein von den Leuten, die ich getroffen habe und sowas. Und ja, wen habe ich da noch so gesehen? Ähm, Genau, dann habe ich den Sascha von äh, Cine Gamers, nee, Cine, Cine Gamers, so heißt es, habe ich getroffen und für, für ihn bzw. mit ihm habe ich, nee, mit ihm nicht, für ihn, für äh, Cine Gamers habe ich dann noch ein Interview geführt, das werdet ihr hoffentlich auch voll zu Gesicht bekommen. Also ich werde es auch hier auf meinem Kanal hochladen, weil ich das Interview komplett geführt habe mit dem David alleine und ja, war einfach echt cool. Also wirklich, äh, da kann man nicht sagen. Ich hatte gestern so viel Spaß und habe mit so vielen Leuten gequatscht, habe ein paar neue Funktionen meiner Kamera kennengelernt und natürlich habe ich auch, wofür ich eigentlich da war, ein paar Sachen über Battlefield erfahren. Leider ist der David Serland nicht für Battlefield Hardline zuständig, das heißt, dazu konnte der mir nicht so viel sagen. Ich habe auch nochmal privat mit ihm gequatscht und er meinte, also weil ich ihn speziell nach Konsolen, nach der Performance, ob die besser geworden ist, bla bla, gefragt habe und da hat er halt gesagt, dass wir mit nicht so viel Neuerungen bei PS4 und so rechnen können, also was Grafik und Performance jetzt angeht. Ja, weil Sony und auch Microsoft keine enge, engen Kooperationen zulassen und daher da so ein paar Probleme auftreten. Ich weiß nicht, ich glaube, die Frage hatte ich auch aufgenommen, wo der das auch so ein bisschen erklärt hat in der großen Runde. Wenn nicht, habe ich es euch jetzt einfach so erzählt. Ansonsten habt ihr es ja gerade eigentlich schon gesehen. Und ja, also da waren, ja, war cool und ein paar Sachen, wie gesagt, erfahren. Ähm, Battlefield 4 interessiert mich leider nicht mehr so sehr, dass das jetzt super spannend für mich war. Daher waren die Leute etwas interessanter für mich, weil, äh, ja, ich weiß nicht, ich habe einfach keinen Bock mehr auf Battlefield 4. Das Video dazu kennt ihr ja schon, dieses mit dem Ich hasse Battlefield, bla bla bla, oder was ich am Battlefield hasse, so habe ich das, glaube ich, genannt. Und ja, von daher... Äh, bin ich eher fixiert jetzt auf Battlefield Hardline und ja, ich hoffe da, dass ich da dann noch irgendwann ein paar Infos, nähere Infos kriege. Daher kann ich euch jetzt auch nicht so viel zu Hardline erzählen, auch wenn ihr das bestimmt wissen wollt. Ich verabschiede mich so lange schon mal und ich hoffe, wir sehen uns das nächste Mal und ich hoffe, euch hat das Video gefallen. Gut, dann bis zum nächsten Mal. Ciao!